guys, welcome back to my video. I just got done filming another video and I have this same get up on, so let's just ignore that and pretend like this is a different day. But while I was filming that, I figured that I would get to this video, which is a highly, highly requested video and long overdue, and that is going to be my year update for my hysterectomy surgery. A lot of you guys leave comments every day asking how I feel a year later. It has been over a year at this point. My surgery was back in May. So I'm gonna try to keep this video very brief and to the point. You know, I'm not great with that, but it's really, there's not a whole lot to go into, but I'm gonna discuss the questions that I have been asked, just some little notes here and there, and then you can leave any questions that you have down below in the comment section. So, the first thing we are gonna discuss, because it, is, because it is the thing that made me want to make this video to begin with, and that is hormones. <laughs> So let me tell you, this is something that I had heard before I went into the surgery, but I want to mention it because I don't think a lot of people realize this. Just because you have a hysterectomy does not mean that miracles are going to happen and all of a sudden you're going to stop having symptoms that you had before. And so you're kind of like, well then why would people have the surgery if it doesn't help with issues? It does. It helps with many things, but then there are other things that it doesn't necessarily help with in certain individuals. For me, I still have all of the symptoms of PMS and I would say that I have them to the extreme. They are far greater than they ever were before. Um, this is not the case for everybody. This is the case for many people. And you know, also I still have my ovaries. So if you don't have your ovaries, you're gonna have a different experience than what I'm experiencing. But let me just put it this way. I am at the point where I am go ready to go see a hormone specialist because the hormones are insane. What do I even say about that? Um, I'm actually deep in it right now, and today is a better day than it was yesterday. I always know it's coming, just like clockwork. Um, two days ago, I was driving in my car, and out of nowhere, I talked about this in a video before, but out of nowhere, I just felt complete sadness. Like, it overtakes my body. I recognize that I'm feeling it and I can't get out of it. So I was driving, I started to cry. It is uncontrollable, which is unfortunate. Um, but I knew once I felt that, I was like, all right, here we go, we're on the cycle again. And then yesterday, I was just feeling angry. I mean, if I'm being perfectly honest, I had the, I had the patience of, I mean, it was zero. I had no patience. I didn't want to deal with people. I didn't want to look at anybody. It was hard being a mother to my children. My husband knew, so he kind of like, he went with it, he kind of backed off. He's used to it at this point. Um, but I was just really, really, really irritable. I felt angry. I felt like I didn't want to be around people. I completely understood why some women, you know, go off to a hotel during their period because it just really hits me like an oncoming train. I mean, it hits, and it's the trippiest thing. Hormones are insane. You know that you're feeling it. You know where it's coming from, and for some reason, I cannot work my brain to get out of it. So that is like the biggest change is just the emotions, the hormones that hit. Sometimes I feel really, really sad. I feel really depressed. Other times I feel really irritated. I feel angry. With that, I also still experience period pain. So every once in a while, I wouldn't say month to month. I mean, it's pretty much month to month, but sometimes it's more subtle than other months. I get a lot of pain. I get really you know, strong, like cramping almost. Obviously, it's not cramping in that my uterus isn't contracting, but I get cramping, I get bloating, I get all the typical things that you get with your period that make you feel uncomfortable. And with the adjustment hormones, you also still have the conversation of sex. And that's one reason I got into these videos because these are things that people don't talk about. So I don't have my uterus, but around this time, sex can still be painful. It can be painful in that hormones still cause things to um, be irritated. They cause, they cause things to be inflamed. So sex during that time can be really painful. 
Um, it is not so much painful anymore. Like it used to feel like it was hitting the, the back wall. It doesn't necessarily feel like that very often. I still have that feeling every once in a while, but now that I'm thinking about it, that's kind of, you know, weaned off and it's more about the inflammation during the hormone period. And then sometimes I can literally feel my eggs dropping. I can feel the process. I can feel my ovaries hurting. So what I'm getting at is that even though I don't have the uterus, I still have the symptoms associated with the uterus and with PMSing. So you might be asking yourself, well then do you regret the surgery? Is it worth it? Yes, 100% I have zero regrets about the surgery and this is why. I talked about it in my hysterectomy videos, like why I was doing it. And for me, it came down to my uterus was so large and inflamed and hostile. And so the size of it alone was pushing up on my bladder. So I was waking up to pee sometimes 12 to 15 times a night. During the day, I could not go 10 minutes without going pee. It was taking over my life. I could not drive to the kids' school without having to pee the second I was there. I couldn't go from the school to the house without peeing as soon as I got home. The anxiety about peeing got so bad because I would know that if we were gonna go somewhere, I'd have to prepare myself, I'd have to dehydrate myself. If we were going to the movies, I was gonna have to miss part of the movie. So my life was consumed. It was consumed with going to the bathroom. Ever since my surgery, that is no longer the case. I would say I'm pretty average. I do drink a lot of water during the day. So at night, I tend to wake up one, two, three times a night, just depending on how much water I had that day, how early, how late I go to bed. But when you look at going to waking up 12 to 15 times a night to pee, versus one to three times. Think about how much sleep I was losing waking up all night long to pee. My body was never able to get in like proper cycles of sleep, so I was sleep deprived and that was affecting everything regarding my health. So, since I guess it's pretty obvious at this point, having that surgery got rid of that problem because like I said, my uterus was so over large that it was pushing against my bladder causing all that to happen and now I no longer have those issues. So the surgery, 100%, I would do it again. I have no regrets. I did discuss hormones and you know, this is, listen, the way I see it, life is life. Things are gonna happen naturally. I'm not scared of it, but the hormones have really like messed up my body. It has my skin um, really, really, really dry, which I've never had a problem with before. And to be fair, I do have well water. We just got a filter and things are already getting a little bit better, but the hormones have definitely affected my skin. It has affected my face. <laughs> my skin on my face is a lot more dry. You can see more of my lines. My hair, that's probably the thing that I notice the most. My hair is not soft and silky. It is kind of coarse and brittle, which is why I'm wearing the wig today because I have not found something that has made my hair work. To be perfectly honest with you, I feel like I've kind of, kind of gotten a routine down for everything else. I kind of know my style, what I like to wear. I know what makeup is really, you know, that works really well for me and that's high quality and I can put it on and go, but my hair is still constantly a source of stress. And a lot of that is just because the texture has changed so drastically from not only having well water, but from the hormones. So you win some, you lose some. That's the way I see it. I'm not peeing 15 times a night, but I have drier skin, a little bit more wrinkles. It all comes with the territory. And then when it comes to weight loss, because I know that is a question that a lot of people have, when you start messing with your hormones, when you take something out of your body that is meant to be in your body, sometimes you can have like weight fluctuations. You can lose weight, you can gain weight. Personally, I have not noticed any changes in my body at all whatsoever. Um, I'm still pretty consistent with the things that I do. I still eat a plant-based diet. I still get a little bit of exercise every day. I'm pretty active. I don't sit down during the day basically at all. I'm always on the go. I drink a lot of water. I eat pretty healthy. So I haven't noticed any weight gain or weight loss for me. It's a possibility for other people, but I just haven't experienced it myself. 
And that's really all I have to say about this. This might be my shortest video I have ever filmed because I, I mean, it's pretty cut and dry. It's pretty to the point. That's the things that I've experienced. But if you have any questions because maybe I forgot something, please leave them down in the comment section below. I try and respond to every single comment unless there's really nothing to reply to. Um, but if you have any questions, leave them down below and I will be happy to answer them. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.